The Epic of Gilgamesh is considered to be the earliest surviving work of literature. It was written in 7000 BCE, and the story, partly anyway, involves a guy looking for the secret to immortality. We've been trying to crack that nut for a while now. But lately we've developed some interesting new nutcrackers that might actually make it possible for us to achieve some sort of immortality in the next 50 years. And like most things on this channel, it all starts with Elon Musk. Because of course it does. What I'm about to outline for you is a real roadmap to immortality. It's based off of a lot of reading and studying I've done, and dog walking. Lots of dog walking. I wanted to do this because I haven't really seen this idea laid out in exactly this way before, but I do want to make clear that I don't claim any kind of ownership over this idea. This is an amalgamation of several different ideas and a lot of work that a lot of people have put together out there. This is just kind of my interpretation of it. It also needs to be said that this is a gross oversimplification of concepts, and some of these hurdles are gigantic, like possibly insurmountable. By humans, anyway. Advanced AI could come in the next few decades and change everything, as we all know. I also want to point out that this is not about biological immortality. There are some really incredible life extension technologies in the works right now that deserve a video all their own, but for the purposes of this video, I want to just assume that the biological body is not something that can live forever, and this is a way to figure out how we can live beyond our body. So take this all in, see what you think, and let's talk about it. You know, maybe I nailed it, and maybe I'm way off, but either way, I think this is a jumping off point to some really interesting conversations that I invite you to join down in the comments below. Step one, create a brain-computer interface. The first step in getting our minds outside of our bodies is to create a conduit through which our minds could travel into a computer. Elon Musk is already working on this, of course, with his new company Neuralink, which I described in a previous video, right there. But the brief summation is that we're already starting to see some integration between brains and computers in paralyzed people, giving them the ability to move robotic arms and even fly drones with their mind. This is at the forefront of brain interface technology. From there, this technology will expand to able-bodied people, giving them the ability to communicate with computers outside of their own mind and control things like robots and even smart homes. Ultimately, the idea is that we can integrate our brains with the internet and have instant access to information, be able to store our memories, communicate telepathically, and enter virtual worlds in our own minds. You know, that old chestnut. Now that's all fun in theory, but what would it feel like? We can only assume right now, but I think it would be like learning a new sense. Like imagine if you wake up tomorrow with the ability to see magnetic fields like a shark does when they're hunting. You'd be able to look at a wall and see where the wires are by the aura of the magnetic field that you'd be able to see. That would be weird. <laughs> and it would take a lot of getting used to at first, but our brains are malleable enough that they would eventually be able to take in these new senses and, and appropriate them with those senses we already have and, and be able to work it all out and engage them in the conscious experience. The new technologies required to get there would be advanced brain mapping technologies and the ability to access enough of the brain cortex to be able to integrate it into this system, and that would require nanobots. Really the only option for doing this is tiny microscopic nanobots that could travel through the bloodstream and go up and form these lattices in the brain folds on the surface of the brain and be able to engage with the cortex that way. Anything other than that would just be way too invasive. This leads us to the second step, replacing neurons with synthetic circuitry. So this is where some of you may say, hey, if we can, you know, integrate our, com our brains with computers, why don't we just download our consciousness into a computer and be done with it? Because of the teleportation problem. As I talked about in my previous video on teleportation, all you'd really be doing is creating a copy of yourself. What you really need is continuity of consciousness. Otherwise, you're just creating a digital version of yourself that gets the party into eternity while you close your eyes and cease to exist. And that's basically just a higher tech version of journaling or painting or doing YouTube videos. That's not why I do this. That's why I do this. The only way to ensure that the continuity of consciousness remains unbroken is for your brain itself to become a computer. So in the same way that the nanobots created the neural lace across the surface of your brain, they could also go through and one at a time replace your neurons with synthetic ones. This whole thing should be painless because there are no sensory nerves in the brain. And the experience could be something like a feeling of enhanced cognition and expanded memory, increased creativity, if everything goes right. If things don't go right, you could imagine everything from massive deja vu to fogginess to mood swings, hallucinations, even seizures. 
Nobody ever said immortality was free, son. In order to get there, we need to see advancements in synthetic neurons and nanotechnology. So now our consciousness is embedded in a computational device modeled after our own brain, something that can survive after our bodies pass away. Now we just need a place for it to go. Step three, build simulated worlds. I should point out that this could be considered step 2.5 because this and the other thing could be going on at the same time, and in fact are going on at the same time. Virtual reality and simulated worlds are all over the place these days, and video games have become almost photorealistic. But still those experiences only involve two senses, sight and sound. There are some tactile devices that also integrate touch into the equation, but that's still sensory input coming from the body. We need to be able to hack all the senses, sight, sound, touch, taste, smell, and integrate those into the physics of the virtual world. For example, it needs to know that if you get hit in the head with a baseball, that you will feel pain where the baseball hit you according to how fast that baseball was traveling, and that that pain would feel different than if you got hit in the arm because different parts of the body experience pain differently. But let's just say we get there. What would these worlds look like? First of all, they could be whatever you want them to be. You want to have the ability to fly? You can do that. Want to play basketball on Pluto? You can do that. Want to engage in all manner of sexual perversions? You will do that. An endless number of doorways that step into vastly different worlds with different rules, different ways of being. Some of them it might be free, which means they'd probably be paid for with advertising. There'd be billboards all over the place. And some of them might be premium that you pay for. Movie studios would have a field day with this. They could create virtual worlds with, that would allow you to actually step into the movie. Imagine visiting Pandora from Avatar or actually going to Jurassic Park. You can imagine the interface being something like a gigantic hotel room that you step into and each room is a doorway to a different world. Or maybe it's more like a transportation hub, like a train station. And it won't just be for recreation. Businesses would be able to hold meetings in virtual conference rooms where people just pop in there from all around the world and be able to sit across from each other physically, virtually. Everything that we use the internet for today will take real physical form in a way that we can step into and interact with. And just like professional gamers make a living in a virtual world, there'll be entire economies and job markets opening up in this simulation with opportunities that we can't even imagine right now. The earliest version of this will feel kind of like VR. It's more of a programmed thing that you get to experience in an immersive way. Later on, it will start to feel more like dreaming and eventually more of a lucid dream that you can interact with. This is a direction where many, many futurists think we're headed. A world where you can pop in and out of virtual worlds or reality. There's different levels of existence that you can be in. It's, it's, it's going to be an interesting time. So we at this point are definitely transhuman, but not necessarily immortal because our brains are still this sort of biosynthetic thing that's interacting with a computer. So the fourth and final step is permanent residence in the simulation. Now ultimately, one way or another, our consciousness needs to get inside that computer. Luckily, at this point, our brains have become computers. So when time has had its way with you and your body finally kicks, your digital brain can be removed and inserted physically, permanently, into the supercomputer managing the simulation. Now that might just be enough. Your brain might just be a peripheral that's shoved into a slot like a server farm, except I guess a brain farm. Or maybe we figure out a way to actually download your consciousness from this brain into the computer, maybe just a little bit at a time, sharing the cognition and the processing power with the computer a little bit at a time so that you maintain that, that persistence of consciousness. Either way, for the indefinite future, we now live permanently in this simulation. We can be whatever we want to be, we can go wherever we want to go, except reality, because we don't exist there anymore. Now this is one of the arguments that people give against this sort of simulated reality, that it is still a form of death because you still have to leave all your loved ones behind. But maybe not. Uh, for one thing, they'd be able to visit you in this world. They could come by your simulated house, you can take simulated trips together. When grandma dies, she really would just be going away somewhere and you could go hang out with her. But she might be able to visit you through an avatar. Imagine a humanoid robot-like thing that can translate all the sensory information from the real world into the person in the simulated world. So just like real people enter the virtual world, virtual people could enter the real world. So then you can live forever in the simulated world, travel anywhere you want in the real or simulated world. You could hold a job, form relationships, and just go on existing. And existing. For millions of years. Eventually the supercomputer would need to leave Earth because the sun will 
explodes, so you'll just kind of wind up being in this giant computer floating through empty space, watching the stars blink out over trillions of years until the universe goes dark and cold. Yay, immortality! The downside to living forever is that the universe will not go on forever. Now, some may argue that the heat death of the universe is so far in the future that it might as well be forever. But as long as time exists, it will continue to pass. And existence will eventually end. The only way to truly survive forever is to exist outside of time. And with enough technological advancement, aided by advanced AI, our simulated world could possibly create a portal into a higher dimension, one that exists outside of time. Now if, and I love this idea, but this is a big if, <laughs> consciousness is non-local, that it's an emergent universal phenomena that we are all experiencing through our meat suits that we return to when we die, I think it could look a lot like this. An instantaneous connection to all living things throughout the entire universe. Everything that has ever happened and ever will happen, all happening simultaneously at the same time. In a word, nirvana. So, if you don't believe in heaven, maybe we can create one. Now, if that doesn't give you something to think about, I don't know what will. So, let's talk all this up down in the comments. Now, real quick, I want to give a shout out to our newest Patreon supporters that supported the channel this week. They are Michael Ford, Josh DeRoos, Kanal Tengasi, Patrick Conroy, and Raimundo Pulido. Guys, thank you so much for joining. If you are interested in joining, you can go to patreon.com slash answerswithjoe. All kinds of extra content there, including outtakes in my secret vlog that only Patreon people can see. So thanks to everybody for watching. Uh, I find this topic really fascinating. I hope you did too. If you liked it, please give her a thumbs up. And if this is your first time here, uh, check out all my other videos because I talk about this kind of stuff all the time. And if you like it, please uh, subscribe. I would love to see you back. I do stuff just like this every Monday. And as always, this video is brought to you by Canker Boy. If you get uh, regular canker sores, you don't have to live with them anymore. There is a solution. Go to cankerboy.com. Check it out. Live life pain-free. All right. Thanks again for watching. All you guys go out and have an eye-opening week, and I will see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.